Hey guys, I'm Shaft, this is Polygon Gaming, and I've got an exciting match for you today. Thanks for tuning in to our dailies. This is something we're starting up. Let me know in the comments below if you like the dailies, if you want to see more like this, or if you like the more in-depth content, um, and you'd like to see more of that more frequently. Let us know. Anyways, here on the top left-hand side of Ascension to Ire, it's one of the new maps in the new map pool. She is playing the Blue Terran. It's Livaby. Surprised to see her playing blue. I know she loves the pink, but it's okay. Here on the bottom right hand side of the same map, representing Sloth Esports Club in the Red Zerg Trunks, it's game time. Game time's actually a Sauron Zerg. He tends to favor mineral heavy defense with like a low tech, um, like low unit tech with upgrades. Uh, he's a very stylistic player, typically going for super early third bases, sometimes even pulling off this extractor a little bit to get extra minerals out, to get more drones, an earlier third, and uh, the lower tech defenses he'll need. He really doesn't care that much about his gas. Uh, Livaby, on the other hand, appears to be doing, oh my, a 2-1-1. This is a little bit of an older build. It's got some weaknesses, especially on these newer maps with these wide open ramps. Lings can do a lot of work in here, especially once Ling Speed comes out and kills off the Reaper. Uh, this can be vulnerable, and she's building it on the low ground. If you're going to do a 2-1-1 because you're uh, not going to have very much map control early on, you're probably better off building that somewhere in here. In any case, game time might not take advantage of it. I don't know if that's going to work out with his timings perfectly, but we've got a couple of queens on the way. A few lings are already on the field, and ling speed's quite far away. Now, these lings getting... Oh, a great surround on that reaper. That's actually... Uh, that's way better than game time would have expected. Typically, there's a back-and-forth chasing scene, but with this being said, these lings can rush right across. Oh, and that means I'm actually terrified right here. This could be a canceled command center. We'll see. Meanwhile, there is a third base over here for game time, and uh, that, that this is, you know, oh, and he pulled off from the gas. So yeah, this is just standard, standard game time. Livaby, of course, uh, you know, doing the standard 2 on one There's the stem pack we'd be expecting, and uh, yeah, this is a, just a little bit of an older meta. We'll see if game time has a um, answer for it. I know he was doing really, really well at 2 on one at the height of it. So unless he's changed his style enough that, you know, he can't react to it, or he somehow forgot everything he knew, 2 one is not really what you want to do against him. There's the uh, starport, so we can expect the medevacs pretty pretty quickly, and, uh, yeah. I don't know. Livaby's going to need some insane APM in this game to be able to keep up with game time. I know she's got an addiction to candy, so maybe she's getting a sugar rush or something, because this game is about to get pretty intense. These lanes with speed are no joke. I don't know if you... Maybe he's thinking about dropping. No, no, he's just gonna rush right on in here, and he's probably. Oh yeah. No, this actually isn't gonna do that much. Um, Lings might get a couple of SCVs, but yeah, th those Marines are gonna clean up eventually. No doubt about that. All right. So meanwhile, these Lings not really intended to do that much damage. Yeah, they could have been drones, but look, he's already got a 14 drone lead. He needed some scouting information. And if you take a look, he's seen the starport. He's seen um, at least 111. He probably suspects the 211. I think he's probably aware of it. He is getting an evolution chamber up. Um, just in case, you know, he, he needs the upgrades. So I can't I can't fault him for anything he's doing right now. Um, he doesn't have a second gas. That's really key for defending because the one 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 or rather the two one one uh, will be landing about five five and a half minutes on a standard map. I think these are a little bit larger, so maybe five and a half to six. Um, although Stimpak's finishing up in about nine seconds, eight seconds. Yeah, so it, it might be as early as five thirty. But the Overlord does scout that moving out and. Looks like this is on a direct path into this overlord as well. So we've got game time already putting his units over here. This is a great spot to defend the third. And he can also use this creep spread to swing right in here to the natural. This is much, much better creep spread than we saw from the Zerg from yesterday. And uh, looks like Liv would be actually making smart choices, taking the time to clean up this creep and kill off overlords. 
but she's a little bit uh, premature. She uh, got on the creep, doesn't lose any units off of it, um, so not that big of a deal, but she wants to be careful about that because those can uh, become costly. Now we've got some extra gas uh, being produced for game time, so he's ready to barrel into the tier 2 techs. That could mean like Roach Baneling, it could mean uh, some Mutalists getting added. We'll see where he chooses to go with that. Now, Lings are going to be swinging in here to deal with these Marines. Medivax picking those right on up in the creep spread definitely just pushing right on forward he kills off the uh or rather she kills off that um last creep tumor great pickup there game time not responding uh quite as quickly but you know there's plenty of queens to replace that no problem uh fourth base getting knocked or dropped down for game time as well as a third base in production for liva looks like she's gonna be powering up at home with a couple more barracks and uh we've got a 19 worker lead right now for game time Looks like Liv B is just going to keep these units out on the map to punish the creep spread and poke in at any weaknesses. Now, we could talk about the base structure here at the 3rd and the 4th. This is a great place to park, and it makes swinging your army here or here very, very simple. However, the 5th base on this map is kind of hard, because if you go over here, yeah, you'll have uh, you know, the high ground to cover your this, this base here. But over here, the creep should be already connected and pushing out. And see how this is a much easier way to defend Lings and Bane is doing great work. Kills off one of the medevacs that did have some units in there. And that that's pretty much an ultimate shutdown. You can see the creep already connected over here. And by connecting here, you can park your army here and swing to both of these. So eventually hoping to like, you know, park here. And then you can swing here, here, here. So it's really going to be about that next base for game time. Will it be, of course, dropping, trying to take advantage of the further apart maps and the weird angles on this map. And, uh, yeah, the wings trying to get in here, but this is a really weird map to try and defend drops from. This elevator pushing is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty powerful. Ling Baneling are going to have to be split. Some queens coming up here on the high ground uh, so that when these lings knock back the marines, maybe they can knock back the marines. It's going to be hard. There's a more Ling reinforcements. It looks like, okay, yep, yeah, there we go. There's the pickup. And the queens are going to be there to catch the pickup. There we go. First uh, medevac. Not quite falling. Liberator going to be reinforcing the medevac infantry armies. Looks like Ling Baneling going to run right on home. He's tired. Oh, nope, nope, not not running to uh, Liverby's home base. Pick up, great pick up there. And Liberator getting a few key Baneling hits, but the Queen's going to be swinging in here and trying to kill off the Liberator. Looks like Liberator bought enough time for the Metavex to get a decent enough drop off, but the Link's going to be swinging in here and forcing that drop back. Liberator going to use this opportunity to kill off an Overlord, but, oh, almost sacrificing his own life. Manages to get away there just a moment. Now, meanwhile, all this was happening, Overlord had some creep spread spread out over here. Does manage to um, go ahead and kill off that Overlord, but the Lings do smell the blood on that base. Third base cannot be allowed to go down. Liviby needs a third base, but Game Time's got a lot of really expendable units. That is a lot of Lings that he can just throw away with really little to no cost to himself. And of course, making main Lings cost a little bit of gas, but they are super powerful against a 2 one one setup. As you can see, the Bane Lings uh, don't give the Medivacs time enough to heal, whereas the Lings do. And this creeps right very, very powerful for game time. It's making all the difference uh, because it's slowing down the Terran's pushes because he has to slow, or she has to slow down rather to do the scan and kill off the creep. Anyways, Link's going to be swinging here. Widowmine does uh, drop in a position a little bit slower and wastes her, uh, its uh, hit on the Queens, but the Medivacs are going to be able to get back. Lings are going to try and get under here, and a couple of Mutalists are there as well. The Mutalists, of course, are there to target down the Medivac. The Lings are there to protect the Mutalists from the dropping Marines, as you can see them raining down. Livabee doing a great job. Now, here is a key moment in this game. Game Time is a very, very powerful player. He's got great macro, a very strong sense of style, and he understands how to make that style work for him. But it's 10 minutes in the game, and he is choosing to chase his opponent into the natural and to fight rather than to take, say, Artosis' advice when your head get more ahead. Artosis' general recommendation would be to kill this orbital command. 
win ahead, get more ahead. Kill this, go home, take another base. Because game time breaks that, I want you guys to take a moment and ask yourself why he breaks that. You can pause the video, I'll give you a moment. Alright, hopefully by now you've figured out an answer and we're going to watch the rest of this replay as your answer. If you haven't, pause it, think about it, get back to me. You can even write it in the comments below in case you're the type to forget it. I, I mean, I would forget my answer. but So, write it in the comments. Anyways, back to it. Alright, so the Ling Bane is going to be swinging in here. Gets a couple of the SVs. These SVs have been pulled off the line to buffer for the Marines just a little bit. The Bane is going to make short work of those. Mule is going to be swinging in here. And he's got pretty much double the army supply of his opponent. Now, aware of that, he pretty much knows he can go for the kill. However, we've got to think about this. Mules are pretty powerful units. Even if you kill your Terran's third base, mules give him a chance to get back into the game. If game time had backed off here, Livabe had just got the 2-2 upgrades and had a very strong lead in that regard. The only weakness in Livabe's play was the fact that her economy, her third base, was so delayed. And in fact, you know, she's down to 19 workers right now. But because her third base was so delayed, she was never able to replenish the losses from her constant drops. Had she had that third base in something like, you know, the way Bunny plays uh, TVZ, she would have been able to replenish those losses, and this would have been so much more powerful. And, you know, maybe game time would have been able to held it off, maybe not. But in this particular game, Livibee's biggest weakness was the fact she did not have that third base uh, mining in order to produce out of it. And we can still see she was floating a little bit, but eh, it happens to the best of us. In any case, guys, hope you liked this cast. If you did, please, uh, you know, let me know on Twitter, here on the comments. You can visit us on Patreon. There's all kinds of places you could let me know. Just uh, give your feedback. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. If you'd like to see, you know, less of the analysis, more of the entertainment, I can do that. I just, you know, personally, I think there's a market for the analysis. So that's what I'm choosing to do right now. Let me know what you guys want to see. This is your channel after all. This is Polygon Gaming. I am Shaft and I'm signing out. See you guys next time. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.